Hey guys, this week we're going to look at shading shapes um, and we're going to look at showing values using our pencil to shade. So all you need is your pencil and your sketchbook. Uh, most of this on what we're going to draw, which is the top of a pineapple, is basic shapes. And we're going to go from there. Uh, so if you notice, before we get started, um, we're going to look at showing values. So like right in here where it goes dark and then it goes to light. Okay. You're going to learn how to do that. Okay. All right. So, uh, we want to reference back to, uh, it's a shading video I did where we talked about the tornado. And so what we do is we started dark and then we created a gradual transition to light. Okay. And then if you have to layer it, layer it. You know, it's up to you. Okay. So if I were to take the same principle and apply it to making a circle into a sphere, and this is my light source, I'm going to come right here. I'm going to start dark. I'm going to color in circles. If you can't seem to color in circles, you just make sure you're coloring in one direction. Okay, so we have where it goes dark to light, okay? I'm just trying to reiterate some of this information so that way it helps you out. But if you have not watched it, please go back and look at the video where I show how to shade. So it does help a lot. Um, I'll show you how to draw a sphere and shade it, a cube, um, different shapes, okay? But pretty much anything you put down in this class, whether it's with color pencil, pencil shade, or you fill it in with watercolor, um, you're going to show values. So you want to make sure that you're going from light to dark. And if you need to erase, erase lightly in circles, and then you can go back over it. Okay? So... That works out too. All right. So to draw the pineapple, um, you're going to draw a the top of a circle. You're going to start at the bottom of your paper. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And then for the leaves, you're actually going to draw these. Um, to me, they look like teeth. <laughs> so you're going to draw like these tooth lot shapes. Okay. And they go in as long as they connect. I think you're okay. This also creates like a zentangle design if you were to keep doing it. All right. But basically you're drawing, you're, you're curving up and then you're curving down. So curve up, curve back around. Okay. So if you have to take a piece of paper and practice drawing these shapes. And then some, some of your leaves can be like skinny. Um, some can be a little bit long. That's up to you. Like I said, this is all about practicing drawing that shape. Okay. Um, but the bottom of the circle doesn't have to be um, perfect. You do not have to go grab a bowl or a plate or something in a circle. You just basically almost like you're thinking about the rainbow. Just go over. Okay. All right. So we're going to do this together. Um, so if you need to stop, pause, whatever you need to do, please let me know. You're also going to see me erase some because I may draw um, some of my pineapple leaves and they may not go in the right place. So I may have to, to you want to make sure you're visualizing the balance of the pineapple. All right. So. There's my half circle. I think it looks good. All right. So what I want to do, I'm actually going to open my sketchbook so you can see this. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to these are going to get drawn last. So I'm going to start with my bottom leaves. All right. Um, try not to draw dark. It's hard not to. I have a hard time with that, especially this pencil right here is a very good wood pencil. Um, but if you notice, if you're drawing heavy and you go to erase it, you're going to have heavy lines. All 
All right, I'm actually going to go ahead and just draw up like what I was doing on the practice. And when I go up, I'm going to go small. And then we know this is not what the top of pineapple looks like. It's a little bit more fluffier. So I'm actually going to, yeah, I may come in just a race, connect some of these lines. Um, may add in some more. So mine may look like that. And if you notice, if we go back over here to this one, it looks completely different than this. This one probably has a little bit more leaves. And if they start looking the same shape, what I may want to do is erase and maybe turn it to where, so that way, because this, this one, and well, this one's a little bit wider at the bottom, so it's fine. But if you start noticing that there's a repetitive and you want to make it look different, kind of like you're giving the pineapple its own personality. Um, then just erase and emphasize on whatever you need to emphasize. I think I want this one to come down. Maybe I want that. So then if I want that over here, then I want that over here. So... I'm just showing you a difference. You can have a, a smaller top that's fine. Uh, you want your pineapple top to fit at least 75% of the page. I'm not going to make you shade the background. So all you're going to be doing this week is just shading this top. And I'm going to show you how to make it the bottom. We want the bottom to look like a pineapple as well. All right, I think, I think we're good. Okay. So the bottom, I got, you have leaves on the pineapple itself um, where they're kind of folded. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to start with a triangle. It goes like this. And then I'm going to bring that tooth shape back. So that's a little bit too, I don't like that. So I'm actually going to, there we go. I think that looks a little bit better. Um, you can do more than three. So if you feel like you want, maybe I want to add a little one, we can do that. Okay. All right. And then the bottom part to make it look like a pineapple, we're actually going to do a checkerboard style, but we're going to do it in diagonal lines. So these ones I went curved this way. These I want to curve this way. I'll show you another piece of paper. So kind of like you're drawing an X. Okay. Like the, this actually looks like the Xbox X. So we go here and then we keep coming up. So if you need to practice that, you can. Um, that's really what's going to help it. All right. So now that we have that drawn. So again, if you notice, it's different than this. Okay. So yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Yours can look different than mine. Okay. All right. Um, so what I learned with the other pineapple is notice you're going to get a pencil at the bottom of your hand. So if you need to put a piece of paper under your hand while you shade, you can. We're actually going to start shading from the top and then work our way down to the bottom. So if you don't have a piece of paper to put under your hand, you're fine. Um, but I had started at the bottom and then I was like, oh, I have a lot of pencil. Um, so I'm just start, I'm, for this, I'm actually just going to start at the top. Uh, most times you always start with the shapes that are in in the well it depends on what medium you're using uh you want to start with shapes that are in back and then work your way to the shapes that are in front for most mediums and mediums are pencil color pencil watercolor markers anything that you're really able to apply on the paper to or with um, that's a medium So what I want to do is I'm using the tornado technique and right now I'm going a little bit too dark because I, I kind of got zoned out there, uh, but I'm just going dark at the bottom and then I'm going to work my way light to the top. 
If you're someone that you find as you're shading that you are heavy handed, like this pencil is driving me crazy. Um, you really want to make sure you're, you have an eraser that you are using. All right, let me use this pencil. This one I was using earlier and it seemed. This is, uh, if the lead, yeah, it's me. If the lead is dark or heavy, it can be, it can be unhelpful in your shading. So if you notice that you're being heavy handed, you're using your eraser and then you're applying and then you're having to use your eraser again, just ease up and go as light as you can. Um, shading is different for everybody. So it may be that you're someone that you want to shade uh, super duper light and keep layering it. That's going to be up to you and your preference and how you find yourself coloring or shading. But it's the same way as what the video showed with color pencil. You're basically applying pressure and then just easing up. Um, I recommend that you color in circles or shade in circles. If you can't seem to do that, make sure that you are shading in one direction. Uh, if you start shading in multiple directions, it'll kind of look like a scribble scrabble. So you'll see it come out like. And then that's not good. But if you can make yourself go in circles, so in my circles wind up being long circles, so I wind up shading in directions sometimes then it looks nicer. All right, so one of the things to keep in mind with shading something like a pineapple, you're shading each shape individually, okay? So don't come in and start shading the whole thing as a whole. It's got every shape has to be shaded individually. This is where your patience is going to get tested, okay? And then the other part's going to be is if you notice these lines are con these two shapes are connected by this line. So what you want to do is make sure that on one side of the line you have a part that's darker. So if you have to go back, go back. All right. So I'll show you this, up here when I go to shade this up here is going to be super light. I'm just cleaning that up a little bit. Um, sometimes it's hard to you know to stay inside the lines, but you want to just use your eraser and clean up. And then again, I'm just kind of sticking with the shape and I'm gonna lighten up right here because I want it to stay light on the side of the lawn. So let me go back and erase some of this. And if you have a tissue or a napkin, I don't know where I put mine. You're more than welcome to smudge. Um, when you, if you get your art supplies, you should have a smudger in your bag. But for the meantime, you're more than welcome to use a tissue or um, a paper towel to smudge. And I had one. There it is. And only apply pressure to the areas that you had pressure. So wrap it around your finger. If you want to, you don't have to. Um, I actually like the way my lines are, so I'm gonna leave it. But you can, you just use pressure where you put pressure with a pencil and then you just ease up. So it'll look solid. All right, I'm gonna do a couple more. And I think we'll, I'll get it where it speeds up a little bit.
Remember, if you're heavy handed, please take the time to use your eraser. If you're light handed, please take the time to layer. And some of them, they don't all have to go dark as high as they went. Some of these can actually go just a little bit dark. I'll show you on this one. You can go a little bit dark and work your way light for the rest of the way. So it doesn't necessarily all have to be super dark. Um, I actually like the idea of the leaves being different shades like I did on this one. So some of these leaves are a lot darker than the other leaves. Um, and that just kind of works because you have different, different, uh, the leaves grow at different rates. And you have the, so then therefore the way the light absorption is can be, can be a little different. So it works. So to me, I feel like I'm giving each leaf their own personality. And then what I like to do is after I get through with each leaf, I'm going to go back and say, okay, uh, where I wanted my shadow at the bottom, is that dark enough? Or do I want it just a little bit darker? Just so that way there's that contrast. You, It's always good in art to have contrast where it's like you have dark and you have your lights. Um, and that way it kind of, it helps to make things stand out. So, okay. All right, let me do this one. And then we're, I'm going to speed the video up where you watch me show uh, where it speeds up for where I color the rest of it or shade the rest of it. And then I'm going to slow it down so you can watch me shade the, the pineapple at the bottom. And that way you can learn because it's not going to be the same with dark to light on the ends. All right. All right.
Okay, so now we have the leaves colored on the top of the pineapple and we're actually going to start with the leaves that are on the pineapple. So these are leaves that are folded over. So the way we want to do the values with them is we're actually going to do them dark up to the top. And I kind of like to do where it's dark in the middle then light on the edges. Um, that's going to be up to you. So again, it's about the pressure of my pencil. So I'm going to go dark. And if you need to draw these shapes to practice, go ahead. I'm going in because I had a, it looked like a line with it and I want it to have a gradual transition. So I'm actually just going back on top, applying the same pressure and then lightening up on my way down. Okay, um, it doesn't look right yet, but once we get the other ones in, it'll start looking like it's supposed to. Um, shading, coloring, anything you do is going to be about patience. I encourage you, let yourself have a lot of patience. So, if you have to work on it for a little bit and then come back, you can. Don't feel like you have to do this all in one hour, okay? You have all week to work on this. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to start at the top, but I'm going to go in the corner because that's where the overlapping is on the leaves. And overlapping is instead of having shape side by side, it's going to be on top or underneath. That's overlapping. So all of these petals or leaves are actually overlapping themselves. I said petals. I mean leaves. <laughs> all the pineapple leaves are actually overlapping themselves. Okay, now I come over here to this one. I'm gonna go dark. 
And I'm gonna hit that corner just because that petal, that leaf is on top of the other leaf. And now they look like leaves. Okay, so the same thing is going to happen when we go to shade these shapes in. Um, it's not going to look right until you get most or all of them done. And then it's going to look right. And on these, we're actually going to come back in and layer. So what we want to do um, for a pineapple, the outside of a pineapple, it actually has like these things on top. So these are more of crevices where they're darker so they're they're kind of down further than the top of the each shape i hope that makes sense so we're actually going to be adding in shadows in the corners so what i want to do is i'm going to take my pencil and i'm just going to kind of go heavy and then i want to ease up as i get to the middle or even you can just keep it dark on the edges if you would like we may do that because i think that'll be a lot easier for you um, but just remember when you outline, don't leave it as an outline. You've got to come in and shade it where it's got this, uh, this, uh, where it fades that in. So it's not an outline, but in the corners, you're actually going to make the corners just a little bit darker. And then we're going to go light to the middle. And what I can do is I can take my eraser and go in circles. You can take your tissue, smudge it, um, that's up to you. Okay, so again, it's not going to look right until most are all are done, but that's kind of what you're looking for with your pineapple. Now, I know they're they're right beside each other, so it's okay if this is where the layering is going to come in at the end. It's okay if they kind of, if this is the same shade as this for right now. Right now, we just want to get the shapes filled in. I don't really think I'm a fast forward on this one, uh, on this part, just because we're, this part's not going to take as long as it did on the leaves. But and I kind of feel like you want to see me color in every shape so you can get the idea because some of these shapes you don't see all four corners and you have to act like you know where that fourth corner is. So for me, it would be right in here. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. grab another pencil real quick we're gonna hope this lid works Um, that one has a sharper point, but because it has a sharper point, it's not shading the way I want. I like to start drawings off with sharp points. And if I'm fading in details or putting in small details, and yes, I want a sharp point. But the way I've already got this one worked in, that the lead on the end is right where I need it. And sometimes it's okay. I don't know if you can see it right here, but there's that white line. Um, and sometimes that's okay because that'll also help give an illusion. So if you wind up having one of those or a couple of those, you can leave it.
This one's a little messy, so I'm going to smudge it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, just a little bit more to go. Um, let me do, the, do this real quick and I'll come back. All right, so I went ahead and shaded in all the little pieces of the outside of the pineapple. And then what I wanna do to make this uh, a little bit more cooler is to come in and some of these corners go just a little bit darker because when your hand hits it or you start shading, you wind up finding yourself shading almost the same. So, Going darker in some places can be really helpful. That's a leaf. Oops, that's our dairy set. And then if you notice your leaves are starting to disappear, um, I'm going to put shadows around the edges so that way they'll still be there. Um, or you can come on the other side of it and darken like you're making a shadow. That's what I would rather you do, but it's up to you. So there's different ways to make illusions or make things pop out with a pencil. Okay. So it looks like it's done. The other thing I need you to do before you turn this in is you're going to take your eraser. And if you have any smudges, I want you to clean those smudges up for me. So that way I'm not getting a picture of this. And there's like all this craziness of smudges going on. Okay. Uh, don't forget when you're shading, you can put a piece of paper on your hand and shade. Okay. That'll keep smudges away. Um, and you know, emphasize on your shadows, dark corners. Remember when you're shading, you want to apply pressure. Okay, that's what makes things dark. And don't shade on top of your drawing or draw something on top of another drawing. All right, don't forget about the tornado. We go dark to light. Um, if you need anything, please let me know, okay? All right, so here's the side by side. Here's my example, and then here's my other example. So this is the one we started with, and then this is one that I just did with you. I actually like this one a lot better, so I feel like the extra practice helped, okay? All right, so I can't wait to see your pineapples. Thanks, guys.